Hello, everybody. Uh, I am... Um, so I know I've been away for a while. I really haven't been the same since my friend passed away a little over two months ago. Uh, you know, unexpectedly. But I just, yeah, I guess I'm going through the, the process. You know, I guess I thought I was over it. Well, you can't be over it in just two months. I mean, he... I mean, it's actually a guy I dated at one time before before I got married, like over almost twenty years ago. But um, you know. And, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I haven't really been inspired. I've been a little depressed, and and uh, yeah, you know, I don't want to be a, a downer, but I'm. It seems that. Finding happiness is, has always been such a struggle for me. I mean, I probably got a little bit of clinical depression. Not not like to the extent where I'll need heavy treatment or anything like that. But there is a little bit of... Um, there have been cases of depression in my family. So, in my, on my mother's side. So, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of that on me. But, um, you know, I... My father always said, well, you know, if you can avoid, you know, getting medicated and all that, I mean, if it's just manageable, you got to, his, his, and my father's a doctor, but he, he doesn't believe in over medicating. Of course, sometimes medicine is necessary. He understands that, but he, he also has always sort of, um, his views on medicine have always been, you know, take medicine if you really cannot manage without it. But, you know, as far as clinical, you know, like psychological stuff and, you know, I guess there are different trains of thought. Some some people, my mother was more like, well, why why fight and struggle when you could just take a pill and make it all better, you know? So, so it's good. I've had, I've had exposure to both. And my mother's not one to take a lot of pills either, but as far as maybe those kind of things like for for problems with being sad or something maybe she she would be a little more uh anyway um i'm not quite sure how i got on that topic but anyway but i kind of agree more with my father's view that you know sure maybe there is a teeny bit of clinical depression and um you know but you as you get older you learn to manage your life you know, more or less, how it is, and although I can't say that I've managed my life very well, but but I actually, in the past, not any time recently, but in the past, I have been on the antidepressants, and and they worked. I mean, I'll I'll definitely give it that they worked, but then it seemed that uh, at, over time you need higher and higher doses to get the same effect. So. And then you can switch to another medication, and it just gets complicated because then you got to worry about if you take too much, and it just, I, I kind of didn't feel like dealing with it. So I ended up just not taking anything and doing more what my father's uh, belief is. That, I mean, as long as you're not on the verge of, you know, hurting yourself or doing something like that, you know, just try to manage it with maybe meditation or just more natural ways um and yeah and in this case if i am depressed right now there's a direct reason for it i mean a friend of mine just passed away so clinical depression is basically when when you're depressed and there's really no nothing has happened in your life that should make it depressing for you uh you know maybe some people are a little more sensitive to world problems and all that and so they might get depressed because they listen to the news and get depressed, and those kind of things. And yeah, I will, I will sometimes get depressed if I watch the news too much, or if I, you know, if I see some homeless people on the street or or something, or an animal in Argentina have stray animals all over the place. Well, I think it's gotten better now, but so anyway. Um... Oh, but I thought I'd do a ramble today. Uh, I I um 
I was thinking, you know, it would be so nice if I could afford to buy my own place. And, um, <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, it's kind of silly now in hindsight, but I was kind of flipping through my phone, walking to the bus stop and walking home. I do a lot of flipping through my phone, you know, uh, surfing the net, internet and waiting for the bus and all that. There's a lot of time and on the bus. I, that's the nice thing about taking the, the bus or the trolley to work. You, you don't have to drive so you can fiddle with your phone and text people and it's nice. Um, it's relaxing, actually. Uh, oh, so I was I was flipping through the. Well, I have two stories about phone flipping. I guess I'll start with the shorter one. I I decided to just quit Tinder altogether. I mean, it, it you know it was fun in the beginning, kind of flipping through people and whatever. I kind of explained that in a previous video how that all works and. You know, the first week or two it was fun, and then it started getting very tedious, and it's really basically most of the people are on there for, for a hookup, is my experience. I mean, maybe I'm laying down, so I'm not, let me get up a little bit, because maybe other people have had other experiences, uh, but I think my experience has been that people really don't, they're not looking for any kind of relationship other than just a, a quick hookup. So, um, so I just kind of <laughs> walk into the bus stop. It was probably about a month ago, maybe less, uh, one morning. And that was like, it had gotten to the point where I was swiping left on everybody. I was just like, everybody looked so ugly. Like in the beginning, I was sort of every once in a while, I'd give someone like a little chance and I'd swipe right. And most of them would be a match because apparently the guys are there just for a hookup so they're swiping right on every single woman i i think that's what i've read oh it's getting hot oh that's another thing i think i really am pre-menopausal or what do you call it perimenopausal i'm like having all these symptoms now too i mean worse than ever it's ugh. Oh, that's like another video altogether I, i'm gonna do a video on that but i'll label it warning you know guys may not want to listen maybe you do want to listen because if you have a woman in your life about my age <laughs> maybe you'll understand her more uh but but uh, okay that's a part i'm not going to do that in this video so i was just like it, it had gotten to the point where every single person on there was just looked completely so ugly or they looked nutty or i just like i I was so critical towards the end that like that so I've been left on everybody left 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 and then, like it got to the point where <laughs> I had swiped left on every single person that was in my whole radius <laughs> that's a lot of people I mean if you wait a while if you wait a while you know a day or two you'll get more but I guess I had swiped left on every single person and I'd swiped through the whole like the whole portfolio of people within my 50 mile <laughs> radius so there was it gave me a message you know nobody's left you know nobody's left in your radius you know so so i just i guess i didn't realize that i'd said it out loud but i was just like uh i'm so over tinder and I, you know, it was early morning. I, I guess I didn't figure anyone was around. <laughs> and I thought I had not said it so loud. <laughs> I just, I just kind of threw my hands up and like my phone was in my hand, but I, I didn't throw my phone. I held on, but kind of just like a, oh, I'm so over Tinder, you know. <laughs> and I look over. <laughs> And there was this man getting out of his car, and I guess he'd heard me, and he was laughing. <laughs> and I just, I was like so embarrassed, and I just like kind of walked quickly so I could get to my, you know, get out of there, get to my bus stop. But <laughs> I had gotten so frustrated, I guess. So anyway, later that day. I just I just deleted my profile and then I uninstalled it from my phone. Now beware, those of you who are, if you want to try Tinder, you have to delete the profile first, then uninstall uninstall from your phone. It's two steps. If you uninstall from your phone, your profile is still active in there. You just don't have access to it. I guess you could get to it on the internet uh, from your. 
you know, every year, in the beginning of the year, they come out with the that year's list of billionaires for the year. You know, sometimes people are millionaires, and then for a few years they're billionaires, and then they fall back into millionaires, and, uh, you know, depending on how what their net worth is. So Forbes comes out with this list every beginning of every year. And so I was flipping through that list, <laughs> you know, just kind of half dreaming, like how many of these guys are single, you know, and they're like, some of them are in their eighties. Well, Warren Buffett is married actually, but, um, you know, there's some really old guys on there. And then you've got some really young guys, like in their twenties or, or early thirties, like the Facebook, you know, Mark's, Mark Zucken, Zuckerberg, who's married too. Um, I mean, I certainly wouldn't have a chance with any of the younger ones, but I was kind of flipping through the older ones, see if any of them were single. <laughs> like, and then I was thinking, well, how could I actually meet one of them? Even if we assume, because there are actually are some that say that they're divorced, because you can look up information about them. And it, so there's one guy on there that I saw that's divorced. I'm not, uh, he's, I'm not going to say the names, but he's, He's not very attractive. I mean, to me, the, it, maybe the picture wasn't. I didn't even know that. Because a lot of these people are not necessarily famous, unless you see them, of course, on the Forbes list or something. But they're not the they're not celebrities. They're just like a lot of them are computer people. And Oh, but anyway, so an ad- idea occurred to me as I was flipping through and looking for attractive billionaires that, that I thought I might want to try to hook up with in a fantasy world. Um... But then it occurred to me, well, look, there are about 18, uh, there are 1,810 billionaires in the world. 1,810 billionaires exist today in the world. Not many. But I was thinking to myself, if I could get every single one of them to give me $10, I mean, that would be, plus with a little money I've got saved up, that would be enough for a down payment for on a house. But how, like... To a billionaire, ten dollars is like he could wipe his behind with it, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's it's sounding, but I started coming up with this plan, like get every single. But then I thought to myself, well, if I'm going to go for ten dollars from each billionaire somehow, why don't I just go for a hundred dollars from each billionaire and not swindle it out of them? Just be honest, say, look, hey, can I have ten bucks or a hundred bucks, you know? Which is something, to them, it's like nothing. It's like me throwing 50 cents in a fountain at the, at the shopping mall. That for them, ten hundred dollars is just, it's like that. Ten dollars is like a penny to them, or, or less. It's a fraction of a penny, I mean. But, um, so that I was thinking ten or maybe a hundred. It would have to be either ten or a hundred. You can't, it's got to have a one in front for some reason. I don't know why. I just felt that so if I could get 10 from each of them, I could have enough with a little more money of my own that I put in. I'd have enough for a down payment and uh, probably get a, you know, I could probably get a house. You know, an, a, a normal house, not a mansion or anything. So I was trying to come up with an idea. How could I get in touch with each billionaire in the world? And, you know, with this GoFundMe generation now, except I would market only to the 1,810 billionaires in the world. Uh... But I don't know. I don't know. Would I send them a mail, like a with a self-addressed envelope? Here, put your check in here, and and then of course I would be spending money on the postage. Which so ten dollars, and if it and then not all the billionaires are in the U.S., so that would be foreign postage, and of course it could get lost. So you probably want to have it certified. And so it started getting too expensive with just the ten dollars. It was gonna. I was end up gonna break up, e- breaking even. I was thinking. Um, you know, if, if they're coming in foreign currency, well, maybe they have bank accounts in the U.S. or dollar bank accounts. That I, but I, then I decided, okay, no, it would have to be a hundred dollars from each billionaire, and then that would be one hundred eighty-one thousand dollars. If each billionaire in the world gave me a hundred dollars, I'd have one hundred eighty-one thousand dollars, and then I could, I wouldn't even have to get a loan. I would just buy a house with that. But um. So I got to come up with a plan. You know, maybe I'll do like a self-addressed stamped, um, stamped envelope. And of course, I'm going to lose money because probably they're not all going to send me money. And I would be honest. I'll say I'm just a regular person and I, like a GoFundMe thing, but more personal. I write a personal letter and well, it would be a form letter. 
and say, look, I'm, I'm just, and in return, I would do charity or something. You know, I, w I would have to come up with a better sell than just, hey, can I have some money? I, you know, and but I would, I would be honest. You know, I, I'd have to elaborate on this idea more. I can't just, you know. But so that's what I might do. I might try to get a hundred dollars out of every billionaire in the world. I know it sounds so unrealistic, but why not? Why couldn't I? And now, how would I get their addresses too? Uh, you know, because I'm sure their addresses are secret. Because I could send it to their business and hope that it's forwarded to them. It's not shredded as drunk, junk mail. Because, you know, secretaries, if they see something that looks like junk mail, they just shred it. But that's why I would make my mail not junky looking. It would be very, you know, it might even have a handwritten address on the front so that, you know, it looks more personal with a, a real stamp, not a, not a, you know. So anyway, so that's sort of a, a project I have in the back of my mind. How to get in touch with all the world's billionaires and get them to send me $10 each. <sighs> all right, guys. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. Bye.